friends. This is your friend Tom Henry. I want to tell you a story, true story. The year is 1966. Graduated from high school, Northeast Catholic in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Then when I was about 17, I started hanging in a neighborhood called Kensington. That's where the first Rocky movie was filmed. Pretty uh, area with a lot of graffiti, a lot of drugs, a lot of alcohol. Hopefully it's changing and getting better. I love Philadelphia. But I'm speaking to you from L.A. And uh, I was hanging out, getting drunk, doing drugs, what everybody else in the neighborhood does, you know. And uh, I'm a musician, so I was playing a little bit of music on the side here and there. I'm not really doing anything serious. And I thought about joining the Navy. And I was a rebellious kid. What you don't want to do is go into service if you're rebellious. And anyway, I talked to Mom and Dad. They were about 60 years old. I was about 18 living at home, and uh, yeah, they had me kind of late. I'm the eighth one. My name is Tom Henry. I'm Henry the Eighth. How do you do? So I told Dad, we weren't very close. He was a scary guy. And uh, Mom was a beautiful lady who raised eight kids. So I said to Dad, we never really went anywhere too much, but I said to him, thinking about joining the Navy. He said, hey, I'll take you down to the recruiting station right now. <laughs> so, Dad wanted to take me out. He wanted to get rid of me. Anyhow, we did go to the recruiting station and I joined the Navy. And uh, that was the start of a hellish career there. Anyway, when I joined the Navy, I got put on a ship called the USS Austin. And uh, I was working on the deck force, hanging over the side, painting the side of the ship, scraping the side of the ship, painting, watching the color gray, haze gray, all day long. Mopping floors, scraping floors out of the, scraping the dirt out of the corners. I hated it. Okay? When I went to join, I put in for radar men and sonar men. And they said, that's what I'd probably be doing. But it didn't turn out that way. And uh, being rebellious, I used to go home on the weekends from Virginia where we were stationed in Norfolk. I'd get drunk. I'd come back sometimes late, not give a shit, you know. And uh, I used to get in some trouble. And I had to stand in front of the captain at certain times. I call it captain's mast. It's like a court. So I'm standing in front of the captain and I'm explaining and he's giving me my penalties and uh, my punishment. And um, anyhow, this story is about when I got busted for Panama Red coming across the ocean. That's a serious crime, okay? Let me tell you what happened. I'm going to put it on this part and probably put it on another part or two. Um, I used to hang out with a guy from Chicago, a young black man, we were all young, named Charlie Wilson. Chicago, Illinois, and uh, we like smoking pot. Now, in those days, in 1966, pot wasn't really all that popular. I'd say about five guys on the ship that I knew of, out of 500, smoked it. And uh, anyway, we went uh, sailing across the Caribbean into Panama. And uh, we went through the Panama Canal, through the locks, where the water raises because the ocean's higher on one side than the other side. And we went into Panama, which is a town that, Cologne, Panama, is a town that you get off the ship, and there's a cloud hanging over the whole city. And that's the way it was all the time. And there was prostitution and drugs right on the street. You could buy them on the street. So anyhow, me and Charlie found a cab driver. We asked him if he knew where we could get some pot. Some Panama Red, of course. He took us out to a farm. Now we're starting to get shook up, because he's driving a ways, you know. Everything's pretty cheap, though. And uh, we went out to this farm, and he took us into a shed. And uh, as we got into the shed, the fellow in charge of the farm, 
showed us these barrels and they were lined up about six in a row and he took the lid off and the barrels were filled with, at the time I thought, beautiful red marijuana. Now that's the end of part one and I'll get, I'll get to you on the next part, okay?